Welcome ladies and gentlemen. For today's video, I thought we'd do something a little simple. Can I make it through two different Destiny 2 dungeons before this seemingly whitish colored solution becomes completely dark? This solution is known as the iodine clock. I have a short explaining it in the worst way possible if you're interested. Four different chemicals are needed for this reaction to function properly for this challenge. Iodine, vitamin C, hydrogen peroxide, and cornstarch. First, I'm going to combine the cornstarch and the vitamin C. The cornstarch doesn't dissolve into water all too well, but it'll still work for this challenge. Next, I'm going to combine the iodine and the hydrogen peroxide oxide antiseptics together, that's this weird orange colored solution here. As soon as I add the orange colored solution to the whitest solution, the orange solution will disappear completely and the timer will begin. I'm keeping track of the solution time on the stopwatch, so there's no confusion. Now, let's get set up in the dungeon before we get into this. The first dungeon of choice is called the Pit of Heresy. I'll explain what's going on throughout this dungeon run, but all you need to know is there's a big guy at the end of this dungeon titled the Tormentor, and I have to defeat him before this solution turns a dark blue color. Let's do this. So now that the timer has started, I'm going to make my way to the first area. This part has a lot of falling, so make sure you're wearing your feather falling boots and pray that you've done enough squats. Now that we've made it past all the running, it's time to solve the first puzzle. This puzzle's pretty easy. There's three different enemies that I have to defeat in certain ways with the sword I will obtain from an enemy titled Sword Baron. Once I've completed that, the door to the next area will open. I have to be careful here. My sword could run out of ammo, and I'll have to find a new one. Now why would a sword need ammo, you ask? I don't know. Can I reload it too? The first enemy is the wizard. I have to use the actual projectiles from the sword to do damage to the wizard. The second enemy is the shrieker. He's just that big purple floating ball guy. To beat him, I just block his projectiles back at him to do damage. The final enemy is the shielded knight. All I need to do is actually hit him with the sword itself to do damage. Once I beat all three enemies, there's a giant green light that I'll head towards, signaling that I can leave this area and move on to the next area. They don't pay these guys enough to do this, I'm afraid. Now that I've successfully crumbled the last peak keeper like a Popeye's biscuit, it's time to go deeper into the dungeon to the next area. This area has three main hallways, all guarded by three ogres that can't be damaged, but they will disappear once the door to the next area is open. There are three doors at the end of each hallway, all blocked off by a green wall. An enemy titled Knight will need to be defeated here in order for him to drop this little orb, which is actually the key to one of the three doors. Once all three doors have been opened, the next area will be unlocked. The easiest way to avoid the ogres and open the doors is by scurrying around like some rat in New York City. Now that all the ogres are gone, I can go through to the next area. Again, this area is blocked off, this time by a massive orange blob thing. Like the doors before, I will need purple orbs to open them. Here, I will need six to open this door. Like before, the same knights will drop us the orbs. The trick here is that the area in the middle of the room is actively trying to kill me. In order to stop it from doing so, I have to stay there unless I'm going to get an orb. Every time I dunk an orb, a massive horde of enemies will spawn and rush me in my area, and I have to stay put. They don't call it the Chamber of Suffering for nothing, ladies and gentlemen. Luckily, my guns are a lot cooler, so it looks like they're stuck in here with me, not the other way around. Now that the door is unlocked, I can go to the next area. Just jump down the hole like so, and there you go. <laughs> the next area is a bit of a maze, but essentially, all you need to do is defeat three enemies titled Malevolent Ritualists. Once I defeat all of them, the door to the final area will be open. Now that the Ritualists are no longer, a uh, Ritualizing? Yeah, that's totally a word. The door to the final area will be open. The last area is where the Tormentor is. This guy is a bit more health than anyone we've encountered so far, so I'm bringing the big guns for this one. The solution is still white, so we still have time. This guy is not that bad to beat. I've actually been preparing for him this whole time. Just like the first area, I would need to once again defeat three enemies in the same way as before with the sword. Only this time, they will drop the purple orbs that I need. And just like the previous areas, I would need to deposit the orb. This time in the center of the room. Once I deposit all three orbs, the Tormentor can be damaged by my weapons for a brief time. It looks like we didn't do enough damage to get him this time, but that's okay. I'll just have to go around and repeat the process again. 
I think I've got him this time. The iodine clock must be getting close at this point, so it's now or never, ladies and gentlemen. Well, bam! Hold this real quick. And just like that, ladies and gentlemen, the Pit of Heresy is done. I was relieved to see that I had beaten the Iodine Clock, but by how much? Well, the reaction actually happened around a minute afterwards, meaning if I didn't win in that second damage phase, I probably would have lost. Kinda chillin' thinking about it. Also, the Iodine Clock did not turn blue immediately, like you might see from some other videos online. This is probably because of the type of Iodine I'm using, so it's no big deal. It's time to move on to our next dungeon, the Shattered Throne. This is a bit of a longer dungeon, so to offset the time it will take to to complete it, I just add about half the amount of iodine to the solution this time. That way, it'll take longer to react and give me a little bit more time. And the Shattered Throne begins. Our goal this time is to defeat a witch. She's waiting all the way up at the top of that tower. Upon entering into the Shattered Throne, I got a little jog gonna do to get to the first area. The first area is quite simple, but it can be a bit of a maze since the entire dungeon is a little dark. I just have to go around the area defeating enemies holding the title Labyrinth Architect. Once defeated, a symbol will appear revealing where the next Labyrinth Architect is located within the maze. I will keep defeating the Labyrinth Architects until the door is open to the next area. Story-wise, what's really going on here is we are trying to sneak into the tower to reach the witch. Although, I'm not so sure using explosives is considered sneaky, but eh, maybe the witch is deaf, who knows. Now that the next door is open, time to continue our journey. It's a bit of a hike through the dungeon to reach the next area. Good thing I brought the right shoes. There's also this weird part where I can't move too fast and a bunch of random enemies try to kill me. It feels like dodging the stampede on Black Friday. After a while, I cross the massive chasm and head to the throne room where the first boss will be. He's got a bit of health, so I'm bringing different big guns this time. This one's got a massive red laser. Ooh, shiny. In order to beat this guy, I just have to not die, like I just did. Anyways, I'll need to defeat four wizards, and upon the death of the fourth wizard, I have to extinguish, uh, something? This thing right here? Whatever that is. Then the boss will be damageable. After he folds like an origami masterpiece, we can leave to start climbing the tower to the witch. So far, the solution has not turned dark yet, so we still have time. This part is mostly just a bunch of weird elevators and dodging enemies. I'll have to pass through another Black Friday Stampede. After Black Friday Stampede round 2, I then have to clench my butt cheeks and hope I don't fart too hard or I'll be falling for a while. Once the butt cheeks are unclenched, I can at last take the final elevators to the top of the tower where the witch will be waiting. At this point, the iodine clock had not changed color yet, so I'm feeling pretty confident. The witch isn't really that bad either. The three large knights who protect her will drop orbs upon death, which will allow me to damage her. The trick is, the more orbs I collect, the more damage I do to the witch. Looks like I got all three orbs, ladies and gentlemen. It's time to hit her with the fat McCrispy. See you later. That settles it, ladies and gentlemen. Guns will always prevail over magic any day. It's a good thing the witch spent years learning magic, only to get blown away by some guy with a shiny orange handgun, because only about a minute and a half later, the solution turned dark, meaning I most likely was not beating that boss in time if I had to go through two damage phases like I did with the pit. I'm not really sure why the solution was a weird brown color. This is probably because of a lack of starch. Also, I'm not sure what this weird stuff is floating around in the solution, but I'm sure it's fine. Anyway, that's all I got for you today, ladies and gentlemen. Like the video if you enjoyed, subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time. Keep it icy, ladies and gentlemen.